Okay, so hello again. Um, uh, I know it's uh, getting late in the day, and uh, probably many of you, like myself, are tiring. So I promise a relatively easy-going talk with uh, lots of pictures that should hopefully make things easier to digest. Um, uh, what I want to talk about is um, the Pusey, Barrett, and Rudolph theorem, which I suppose uh, many, if not most of you, have at least heard of at this stage. Um, and a couple of reflections to make about it. I'm only going to talk about uh, this in preparation and this today. So the, the theorem is um, touted as uh, proving that the quantum state is uh, a real physical object. And uh, what I want to set about doing in this talk is, is uh, bring this um, so the manner in which I do this should have appealed to anyone who received it. Uh, all the stuff this morning, during uh, the all these guys mentioned the signal and various uh, ideas of causality. So the question is, um, is the quantum state, which we know to give us probabilistic information, is it, is it, um, is it a, a real physical one, or, or is it just reflecting some knowledge about it? Um, a deeper underlying physical state. So um, what, what people do is to assume that there is some space of underlying physical states and that when quantum states are prepared they merely produce probability distributions over uh, this underlying space of uh, physical quantum states. Um, and so uh, a definition that was formalized by Harrington Beckins would say that, well, okay, such distributions are on the lap. We say that uh, uh, the quantum state really reflects information about this on the On the other hand, if it can be shown that the distributions never overlap, well, then no matter where I am in this real state space, the real state encodes you in the quantum state. So we might as well just think of the quantum state as being an aspect of physical reality. That's the idea. Um, so the PBR theorem has some assumptions. Uh, number one and number two are common to all of the Go theorems. Uh, we assume that there is some objective physical state, and we assume that quantum predictions are correct. Um, the third assumption is the one that I, I want to really focus on that hasn't appeared in other results before. And if you had grant these things, they show that the quantum probability distributions that would be induced by quantum, preparing quantum states uh, can never overlap. So let's look a little bit more carefully at this preparation and this assumption. Uh, we can write it out mathematically like this. Uh, the idea is that if we prepare two different systems, some like some preparation, inducing some object state with whatever probability, and some other location, someone else produced a prepared the system, Inducing some quantum state with various probabilities that, that these should be completely independent in the sense that the probabilities factorize in this way. So, on the face of it, it appears like a, a fairly innocent and reasonable assumption. Um, there's some immediate causes for suspicion, and it's not enough to, to kill this or anything, but some causes for suspicion at this. Well, if I grant preparation independence, um, Bell's theorem becomes completely trivial. Another point is that preparation independence can be used to give rise to other alarmingly strong and low results. Uh, one of them is uh, this one, due to Schlossheide-Fein. Unfortunately, I can't give a, a kind of a, a neat description of this, but it places some, some restrictions on any ontological theories you might want to build that would account for quantum mechanics that appear to be uh, unfeasibly. A uh, third point is that this idea of independence is motivated by local causality. So the idea that things that happen in uh, different space-time regions, uh, uh, space-like space -like separated regions, um, should have no causal influence on each other. But in fact, this idea of causality is on very shaky grounds as well, which should be 
Um, I want to make a comparison between this preparation independence assumption and um, locality. So they're, they're quite similar in a lot of ways. Uh, so Bell's idea of locality was that if we condition on some state, some common cause, not to speak in the language of race talk, um, that the correlations between these two things, uh, where we make measurements and outcomes, uh, should, should factor us. So you, you can see these essentially the same here, talk, talking about measurement devices, and before I was talking about preparation devices. So Bell's theorem ruled this out. Alright, something that's not ruled out in quantum mechanics that we know actually to be satisfied is no signaling. And so this seems like a, a reasonable um, a reasonable independence assumption. So it says that the preparation that I make on one system can't affect the outcome of the case. I know uh, mathematically can express it in this way. So what I'd like to propose is, as an alternative to the preparation independence assumption, we should merely impose a signal or to distinguish the signal preparation signal. As here we're talking about preparation devices going forward, we're talking about measurement devices. So again, we can just uh, express this mathematically in the same way. It says that the prepar preparation data may have to affect something on the physical state. <coughs> preparation independence implies no preparation signal, but the other way around. And so, if we make this assumption of no preparation signal instead of preparation independence, we can escape PBR's conclusion. Um, there's a detailed discussion of where the argument breaks down in the proceedings, but here, um, will suffice to flash up an explicitly side epistemic model which realizes PBR statistics. So, so this is such a thing that's not appropriate. Um, so finally, I just want to mention that a similar proposal was uh, put forward independently by these guys, Henderson, Serbian, and Sutherland, which um, it's not entirely clear how their, their proposal and mine relate. Um, one drawback that I find with this is that so they, they propose that there is an extra holistic hidden variable that can allow uh, for correlations between the two devices. So this is what we call lambda, in, er, lambda dependence. People are familiar with hidden variable theories. Uh, those who are familiar with um, lambda dependence know that you can use lambda dependence to generate any correlations at all. You can signal them, out, whatever you like. Uh, they do impose another constraint, uh, which keeps things reasonable, so it's something like effectively getting back to the I find it harder to motivate physically, but the fact is that it does still imply my condition of preparations. So, to conclude, um, I just want to draw attention to this preparation and this assumption. I think there's some strong reasons to be suspicious of it. Uh, it comes from an intuition of independence that was invalidated by that theory. Um, some other points here that gives rise to it and are having strong results. That is theory was a contributing statement if you if you have to accept preparation independence. What I propose as being a more reasonable physical assumption is this new preparation signal, which rules out superluminous signals and still physically well motivated. Uh, the point is that the PBR argument no longer holds in this case. So we can still hold on to a side epistemic interpretation of quantum state. We can still think of it as just probabilistic knowledge of number of applicants.
actually write it like that. Let's see. What do you mean by bell being trivialized? Um, so if you accept uh, preparation in the methods, um, it suffices. So if you accept preparation in the methods, then you know that quantum mechanics must be psi ontic. If the theory is psi ontic, then just the presence of steering is enough to, to show that you violate the element. So I mean, you don't even have to. You don't even have to go through uh, uh, a theorem. You just have to notice oh, the presence of steering. Uh, something like a double slit experiment. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, Yes. Sir. 